there's a lot to do in Balatro and you may have missed some things. So here are 10-ish tips to help you along your way. Let's start with how things are looking. If you hop into the options, you can turn on high contrast cards, changing the look of your cards from this to this. If you struggle with flushes or have difficulty perceiving color, this may help you out. You can also reduce the screen shake and CRT bloom if they are bothering you. Sticking with some UI elements, if you've selected several cards and then changed your mind, you can right click to deselect all cards. If your run isn't to your liking and you want to start over, don't go back to the main menu, just hold down the R key and you'll be dealt up a fresh run. Once you do have a few hours under your belt, you may want to speed things up. There are 2x and 4x animation speeds. You can see the 4x speed in the lower right has finished the entire hand before the hearts on the top standard speed have even finished scoring. Balatro has a huge number of cards and decks to unlock, but that kind of meta progression isn't for everybody. If you prefer, you can come to the profile selection menu and hit unlock all to have everything at your fingertips. This will lock you out of achievements though. Lastly, on the UI front, both touchscreen and controller are supported, so Switch players, Steam Deckers and Couch Gamers rejoice. Okay, enough on UI, let's talk about some mechanics and strategy. Jokers and consumables can only appear once, so in this shop, Cloud9, Lusty Joker and Golden Joker will not spawn in the shop while I already have them. This can be put to good use though, if you're looking for a tarot or planet card, hold on to some different ones in your consumable slots. This way when you open a booster, the ones you're already holding will not appear. It may be tempting to use those consumables right away, but consider holding on to them. Firstly, they can be used in an emergency. Looking at a measly two pair with one hand to go, create a flush out of thin air to pull victory from the jaws of defeat. But holding tarot cards goes even further. When you use a tarot card, an animation plays that flips the card. Many bosses present you with face down cards. So if you lower the animation speed and then add an enhancement or change the suit of a face down card, you can peek at what it is for valuable information. All right, let's go back to the shop. Over time, you'll unlock higher tier vouchers. Be aware, if you want to purchase a voucher on the right of a paired set, you need to buy the voucher on the left first in a run to allow the voucher on the right to appear in the shop. If vouchers are looking like an expensive prospect, be sure to make use of interest. After each round, you can be awarded with interest at the rate of one free dollar for every five dollars you already have, up to five dollars interest on twenty-five dollars held. This can be crucial for funding strong runs. Now, let's look at some hands and jokers. Many jokers will have the phrase, if played hand contains. This doesn't mean you have to play the hand specifically to get the bonus. This flush has two tens, so I get the base value of the flush, but it will also trigger the sly joker, giving 50 chips as the flush contains a pair. Remember, all of your jokers can be rearranged. This is particularly important when comparing two types of jokers. Plus Malt adds some multiplier to your calculation, like Popcorn offering plus 20 Malt, or Misprint offering a random amount of Malt. X Malt multiplies your multiplier, like this Order Joker. Let's compare two straights, one with the order on the left and one with the order on the right. On the left, the order triples the base 4 Malt to 12, which sounds great, but compare that to the order on the right, where we have the same base 4 Malt, but now the order will multiply the additions from Popcorn and Misprint for huge gains. Alright, one last thing to round this out. It is entirely possible to run out of cards. In this example, my deck only has 33 cards. After a bunch of plays and discards, I have yet to win, and I have three cards left. What happens when we play them? It's game over. Unlike other roguelike deck builders, the deck doesn't reshuffle, so look after your deck carefully. Alrighty, that's everything from me today. If this video was helpful to you, please hit that like button and subscribe for more Bellatra videos. If you have any questions about the game or other tips that weren't put in the list, put them down in the comments. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.